continue on API specifications, uh, another uh, really well adopted specification uh, for event driven APIs, especially designed for, is uh, the async API. And we're really glad to have the creator and author of the async API specification, Fran Mendes, who will be joining us as the next speaker uh, to tell us the story about um, designing event driven architecture using the async API specification, right? So, simple title for something that looks straightforward. Hello, Fran, how are you? Hey, Medi, thanks. Thanks for yeah. inviting and this awesome introduction, man. Thanks, man. So, um, yeah, just one thing. I'm not going to be uh, going full screen uh, in this case because then, uh, you know, in my setup, this will, will be ruined. So, so yeah, I think we can, uh, we can stay like this. Um, yeah, so as I was saying, uh, thanks for, for the invitation. And um, I hope um, uh, you folks can, uh, uh, will be happy with my talk today here and, uh, and can learn something new. And um, and yeah, and, and we can share here. So let me speak a little bit about uh, what is this in KPI, who I am, uh, and uh, so as as Medi was saying, so I, I am the creator of the Async KPI specification. Um, it all it all started like as a side project, uh, like uh, usually it happens, right? And um, and yeah, so so far during the last years, I've been dedicated to. Uh, just making async API uh, grow because there was a, there was a need, right? It, it, it couldn't be a side project anymore. So, uh, so yeah. Um, so my name is is Fran Mendez. Uh, I used to live in Barcelona, in Spain. Now I'm back to my hometown, Badajoz. Uh, so happy to share uh, time with you if you are in the south of Spain or uh, Portugal as well. So I'm close to Portugal, so. Happy to share some time whenever COVID nineteen uh, permits. So so yeah. Um, let me go straight because we don't have uh, so much time uh, today here. Um, I would like to uh, explain a little bit what's the what's the specification for. Um, Async API was conceived as a way to um, to define event driven systems. And what's event-driven systems, uh, or what's event-driven architectures, or event-driven APIs? Call it whatever you want, and then replace event-driven with message-driven, message-based, event-based. We have a myriad of terms for this, almost almost the same thing, right? So, uh, so yeah. So the idea is, we have sometimes systems that are exchanging messages, and uh, and this exchange of messages are triggering behaviors on the other side or in both sides or in multiple sides, like, like it's the case of event-driven architectures. So think about it uh, for a moment as a, as a WebSocket connection, for instance. Uh, you have the client, you have the server, and uh, then you send a message and you might get a response, I don't like to say response because it might not be a response, it might be another, just another message from the server back to the client. So uh, in, in, in this case, what we have is effectively an API. It's just, it's just we are not uh, using HTTP, we're not using request response pattern, but it's effectively an API because um, uh, by, the, by the definition of API, right, application programming interface, uh, it is it is strictly an, an API, right? So I try to in the beginning I try to define this kind of APIs with Open API. I even I asked for that uh, in an issue uh, must be somewhere <laughs> I don't remember now. And um, and uh, yeah, and the Open API falls correctly and uh, as it's normal said like that's not part of the of the target of open api and that's too much maybe um so yeah they they didn't they decided not to go into that land and i understand but i still had a need so first uh, what i what i tried was uh to hack open api uh it did a trick for uh for documentation because I was using get, uh, I, I was using a convention like, okay, so get is subscribe and post is publish. So it means that whenever you see post is a message is being sent. And whenever you see get, 
uh, a message is, is being received or can be received, right? It's a hack. So <laughs> as, as all the hacks uh, the, the has a, have a short life, and um, when when I entered the, the code generation side of things, it was like, mm, not really, it doesn't fit. Um, so yeah, like th this is this is the, the more or less the, the, the history and, and 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 the history and why the purpose of this is this specification, right? This and KPI specification. So uh, my initial purpose with this and KPI was to have even driven microservices defined. Uh, and then Internet of Things APIs appeared. Uh, you know, like uh, everything is booming around the IoT. So, it was unexpected to me, uh, to be honest. Like I wasn't thinking about it at all. And uh, and then you have streaming APIs. And when I say streaming APIs, HTTP streaming APIs, uh, like servers and events and 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 other technologies, right? So um, so yeah, anything that's uh, an exchange of messages uh, can can actually be defined with async API, and it's the the target or the, the purpose of uh, of the async API specification. One of the main differences that we, uh, one of the differences that we had to add uh, in respect to um, uh, to Open API is the concept of the protocol, right? It was like, uh, yeah, now it's not HTTP anymore. Uh, in the beginning, it was just uh, to me for what it was just about AMQP and MQTT. But yeah, more people start to contribute, and it's like, uh, no, we also need Kafka. You have to consider it. No, WebSocket. No, NATS, Stomp, HT. I mean, everything you see there, right on the on the on the slides, um, and they were right. And there are, there are many more that are not even listed here. And eventually, what happened is we need HTTP as well. So it's like, oh, that's a lot. Okay, so uh, we decided to include it. Um, the thing with the, the with the with the protocols is, and something that I would always like to remark about it is, the specification allows you to specify the protocol that you want to use, but there is not there is not a set of uh, protocols that you can use or protocols you cannot use. It's a free form text field. You can put whatever you want there. Uh, it's just up to the tooling to uh, understand these protocols and do something with them. Uh, if there's no tooling, you probably don't have, uh, it, it will probably have not have much value, right? But the thing, the, the, the thing with this is um, we're not restricting, we're not restricting, restricting to, uh, to any specific set of, uh, of protocols. And that uh, makes it more flexible, but at the same time more complicated. Uh, to maintain because different protocols have different uh, needs and, and different ways of thinking about messaging. Uh, like it's the case, for instance, for Kafka, some people say it's a database, is a, is a can be seen as a database. Uh, some, I don't know, like for instance, MQP is a completely decentralized model for brokers. Uh, and, and then you have WebSockets, which is client uh, server. It's not request response, but the model it's not that it's client server, but it's usually uh, used in this context uh, on the client server model, right? So that changes a lot because that means there's no broker or anything, right, in the middle. So um, yeah, I would like to to uh, to show an, an example um, because I think that's uh, the best way to understand these things. Let me make it a little bit bigger, maybe. I think that's enough, maybe. Um, so yeah, so here we have an async KPI uh, file that demonstrates the, the usage of, uh, or the definition of an account service, microservice, or call it whatever you want. Um, this service is just going to be processing signups, user signups. And what it's gonna do is um, at some point when the service uh, processes sign up and store the user in the database and do all the things that have to do. It's going to push a message to the broker, and uh, so people can actually um, 
so people can actually consume it, right? So people can receive this message. So this is what the, this async API file is, is saying. We have channels and uh, and we have a, a channel called user slash signed up. For those familiar with HTTP, which is almost everyone, uh, this looks like a path and it's intention. Um, that also, this also looks like a, uh, like an MQTT topic, which also uses slashes, right? And uh, this is saying that you, as a consumer, can subscribe to this topic to receive this message that is defined here. If you're familiar with Swagger, with OpenAPI, uh, and probably also with Raml, uh, I'm sure you already noticed there is some similarity with OpenAPI. And, that was done on purpose, so that things are somehow reusable at uh, when it's possible or when it is at least easy to uh, to do, right? So um, aligned a little bit with what Daryl was saying about uh, OpenAPI 3.1, uh, congratulations, by the way, to the OpenAPI folks. Uh, I'm, I'm super happy that you're adopting the new uh, JSON schema uh, version. So. Aligned to, with this, we, we did the same on async API 2 back in September and uh, because we knew that this was going to happen eventually. And this definition of a payload or, or schema message you can define on, 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 um, on an async API file are actually using the JSON schema uh, draft 7. Um, the version that OpenAPI 3.1 is using is the next one. Uh, I always forget, I think it's 2019, like September 2019. Um, I think let's call it uh, draft 08, uh, even though some people will not love it. But um, we stick to we're stick to, to seven because we're basically waiting for the tooling for uh, draft eight to uh, uh, to be uh, not even mature, to be pr present, basically. So th there's not much uh, tooling around uh, the latest draft. So once this is done, we, we will update, and it will be exactly the same type of schema definitions as OpenAPI 3.1, uh, 3 right? So that said, uh, as you can see, we have an, an async API file on the, on the left side, um, and on the right side, what we have is uh, the documentation render explaining that you can subscribe to this topic, and this is the payload of the message that you're going to receive. You know, all this, all of this might resemble to Swagger UI or to uh, Redoc, uh, and you know, all these uh, documentation generators for for Open API. Um, so, the cool thing about this, uh, as, as I was saying, is you can now come here and say, okay, so I'm gonna add a new server and this is gonna be a production server. That's the, the name of the server that I'm just inventing right now. And uh, and the server is gonna be using MQTT. So this is my production broker, uh, just inventing a URL, protocol MQTT, yes, uh, sorry, secure. And QTT. Yeah. So that says that, uh, as you can see on the right side, that you can um, you can consume this information, this message, by connecting to this server using the MQTT protocol. Uh, I'm not gonna get deeper into this because it can take super long. But of course, you can specify, um, you know, this. Um, how's it called? Uh, <laughs> so way to ways of uh, authenticating and authorizing and, um, and you know security uh, security uh, security requirements. That's the, that's the name. So so yeah. So pretty much like I was saying, pretty much like uh, like Open API, right? Um, let me check. So okay, so it's o'clock. Um, Well, I would like to to um, to speak a little bit more about uh, who's using an async API because we have uh, a, a concern here. We have a problem here, if you want, and it's that 
um, you know, as, as opposed to open API, async API is usually used in internal, uh, in, in internal systems like uh, connecting to a Kafka broker, routing queue, whatever, IBM MQ, whatever. So what happens is that people are not keen to share this uh, async API documents and sometimes not even tell us that they're using async API. So it is very hard for us to understand who are, who's using uh, async API. And um, we just got feedback from uh, many of the many of the, the companies that you can see here in the slide uh, that they're using it. Some of them just because we're helping them uh, be successful using async API or any, any event-driven architectures, not just uh, on the async API side. And, uh, and some of them because uh, like Slack, for instance, they provide a, um, a public async API file that you can actually consume uh, for their event uh, API. Uh, so that's, um, that I would like to take the opportunity to be on stage here today to, uh, uh, for you to speak. If you know, if, you, if you're using async API or if you know someone who's using async API, we don't want to have your files. <laughs> we don't need to know all the details, but it will be great uh, to have uh, inf this information. Like we would like, we would love to know, and if possible, share with others uh, who's using async API, right? Because that I think that's important. Um, another thing about um, about the spec or the initiative itself is. Um, that it's getting more mature. Like l last uh, September, we uh, released version two. We know it's not perfect. It's actually far from perfect. Like uh, to be honest, I'm already I'm already uh, playing with uh, what could be uh, uh, an SNK Pay version three just to make uh, a proposal um, because it all started as a. Uh, copy or fork of OpenAPI, but OpenAPI is point to point, it's client server is, is request response. And uh, we try to map this into messaging and it's like, it doesn't always work. So, so yeah, we're gonna, we're, we're still figuring out what's the best way to make, uh, um, to make async API be suitable for these scenarios, distributed uh, uh, systems as scenarios. And um, and still be uh, similar or with similar or with reusable parts that can be shared with OpenAPI. Um, so aside, aside from that, one of the things that I would like would love to mention is uh, and and following a little bit what Darrell said as well about uh, alternative alternative schemas, we. Uh, uh, since uh, since version two, let me just come here back a little bit. We have on the messages we have a we introduced a um, a field which is called schema format, right? And I don't remember exactly the mime type, but let's say it's this one. Okay, um, it's this is going to fail because this is not uh, supported by async API I have right now, but the cool thing about it is you can specify the the schema the schema um the format of the schema or this alternative schema so meaning that you don't want to use it's a schema you want to use avro for the payload you could come here and easily say that define the type record blah 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 whatever right so using the 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 avro uh the avro type the avro schema type so this uh, this is making things more uh, complicated, <laughs> of course, but more flexible as well, because now we can easily uh, make or make async API work with JSON schema, with open API schemas uh, prior to 3.1. Um, we can make it work also with Avro, with RAML data types and uh, and then also we're planning on introducing support for protobuf and uh, for XSD, right? But um, at least every format that is uh, easily convertible to JSON uh, 
it's it's easy to to be supported on async API, and we're going to work on that on, on, on the next uh, on the next year, I will say. Cool. So uh, aside, uh, so along with that, uh, we would love to to uh, we're proud to show that uh, people are are uh, valuing this hard work that we're doing, and that we're going to keep uh, doing in uh, InfoQ and ThoughtWorks and their technology radars and, and trends, uh, trend reports, um, they um, they mentioned Async API a, as a one of the technologies that people should start assessing. Right? It's like something you should start uh, trying on, on your company. So we couldn't be happier. It's like uh, this, we're super happy for that. And, uh, and as always, this is a community. This is a community effort. So if you decide to start using async KPI in your company and don't know how to how to start how to get how to get started either it's spec itself either it's tooling either whatever uh feel free to to join our a uh, our slack channel um you can come here to syncapi.com and uh you will find that uh, there is a help menu here where you can you have a link to slack workspace this is an an auto invitation so you'll get immediately there um and yeah let's uh let's let's chat uh in the in the slack workspace because uh we would love to know more about use cases the needs and and, and we are friendly people where uh and, and medi can tell you <laughs> after after this talk so um also, <laughs> so maybe, I, um, am I out of time? No, 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 you called me friendly, so uh, I don't. Okay. <laughs> yeah, to me, this is more like a meeting. It sounds it seems more like a meeting than, than a call because I cannot see anyone, so <laughs> it's, it's weird. Um, so yeah, as I was saying that, um, no, I, I want to give a, a shout out here to, uh, to my team here, Wukash, Gornitschki, and, and Eva Morsillo. So uh, we are the three working at Async KPI right now, uh, full time, and um, we're trying to make it, you know, make it uh, evolve as fast as possible. But we are only a team of three, and we're constantly uh, looking for uh, donations because we run on donations and all these beautiful people here um, that you can see on the logos are already donating so uh, we're always trying to keep our work aside from any uh, company trying to manipulate it so yeah that's why uh, donations are important and um, and yeah so uh, I, I, will, I, I encourage you to to join us on the on the initiative in many ways that like I said even if it's just to say hello on the on the Slack workspace and say uh, uh, say whatever, say uh, ask questions and uh, on or on Twitter, and if if, if you can have a, make a donation, we'll be like super happy for that, of course. Yeah, Fran, two yeah. questions in one minute. Uh, uh, so from Marcin, uh, how do you model HTTP headers? Uh, I have to keep some of them for process consistency in REST part. Mm -hmm. Let me just uh, do a quick. Uh, uh, so, for instance, here we have the message, and we have a payload, but there is a headers, right? And uh, you can uh, you can you can type your headers here. My header uh, type string, whatever. Uh, that that should make it like and as you can see you will see it on listed that this is a, a a property that you can use in this case this is a uh this is an mqtt this is using mqtt protocol but nothing prevents you to use http or https in this case it's production so that's that's one way we also have the concept of bindings uh which is super interesting and this is gonna grow a lot in the in the future in case you have multiple protocols or multiple servers with different protocols you can have the http binding and uh, that don't remember exactly the, the the syntax because it's changing 
uh, we're developing it right now, but could be something like this, right? And then you define the headers there. Um, I will have to have a look at the, at the spec because it's so extensive now. By the way, um, in future versions of this HTTP binding, what we're planning to do is that we, uh, this definition is actually a, a piece of an open API document. So we don't have to reinvent the wheel, right? So, um, so yeah, whatever, whatever is, uh, whatever is valid for open API, uh, to define, uh, headers will be valid here as well on the HTTP binding. And that's something that we're working on. Last question in 10 seconds. What is the most popular protocol using SCPI so far? Oh, that's a, <laughs> that's a good question. I, I have no clue. Um, I too. I have no clue because uh, I, I think I think it's Kafka, but uh, I'm not sure. Uh, but most of the use cases that I see is about is around Kafka or WebSocket. Yeah. But um, because because of the browser support, right? Uh, we, we, need to find, we, we need to invent a specification management tool to be able for you to have analytics. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> So yeah. that's a, that, that's a good point. Uh, that we don't have analytics be, because of what I said, right? Like uh, people use it privately; they don't even have to speak to us to to use it. So it's it's hard to say. We just uh, I'm sure in the in the following months and and years, as more and more companies are starting to adopt uh, async API or build products to support async API, uh, like Solas, MuleSoft, and Bump, and other people are doing. Um, we will start getting some metrics around it. Yeah, thank and you for very much for the time. Uh, thank you for this.